Hi, I'm Sean, and this is Installing ROS on Ubuntu on Windows. Specifically Windows 10, though a lot of this will probably apply to Windows 11 as well. Um, if you're in the club, if I miss anything, let me know. If you're not in the club, um, leave a comment and I might be able to get to it, no promises. Um, but let's move forward. So here are the more or less four programs that you need. The installation instructions will likely vary over time, so I recommend you just Google each of these and Google how to install them. Uh, but first up is the Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. Uh, emphasis on the 2, you're going to need that one. Um, this allows you to basically have the full Linux kernel on your Windows machine. That is to say, you can run Linux on your Windows laptop or desktop or whatnot. Um, and along with that, once you install WSL2, you're going to probably want to go to the Windows Store, though this may be different in future versions of Windows, and install Ubuntu. Um, probably the latest one, um, you're going to want to match it up with whatever uh, ROS version you're shooting for. So say ROS Foxy, you're going to want to get Ubuntu 20.04 from the Windows Store. Uh, now, after that, you're going to want to install Docker Desktop for Windows. This is a key technology for this entire workflow. Uh, then you're going to need Visual Studio Code. And once you install that, you're going to want to go into Visual Studio Code, go into Extensions, and install the Development Containers extension, um, or also known as Dev Containers. This basically allows you an easy way to run things in Docker Containers. Um, with the files that are on your host machine. So it's like you can edit them in your own text editor uh, or you can edit them in VS Code. It's very handy. And then if you want to run GUI programs, that's graphical user interface programs, uh, you're going to also need an X server. So X server is what Linux up until now has been using to render programs to the screen. Um, so if you're on Windows 10, you're going to need to get VCX SRV. If you're on Windows 11, it has uh, a thing called WSLG, which is a Wayland compositor. Um, I'm throwing a lot of alien words at you, um, but that's basically a newer technology that is superseding the X server. Um, but I believe it should be compatible, um, but you'll have to see on how that goes. I have, do not have access to a Windows 11 machine. But yeah, that's you're going to want to install that first. And then once you do that, we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial. So the methodology we're using here is heavily based off of this tutorial by Alison Thaxton, which I'll link in the description. I definitely recommend checking it out. She mentioned some configuration details and add-ons, which I won't be using here. So. One thing to note about WSL2 is that you're going to want to use the Windows subsystem for Linux file system because it's going to move faster. You don't want to be using your native file system because it just adds a lot of overhead. So we're going to go ahead and um, go to open folder. And again, we're not going to be here. We're going to go into our WSL file system and I'm using Ubuntu 20.04. This is the link to it. And you're gonna to wanna to go to home, your user's name, and then this is where you create a new folder. Um, you'll probably name it WSL tutorial. Um, I already have one here. I've tried this before, clearly. Um, I'll create a new one called WSL2 tutorial, so you can follow along. And here we're going to create a folder called .dev container. Now, uh, that's going to be it for this. Now we're going to click on the new folder we've created and select folder. That'll open it up in Visual Studio Code. Let that reload for a second. Um, and then in .dev container, we're going to create a new file called dev container.json and another file called docker file. And I'll go into what these are in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste something here, and I'll try to make this available um, online as well. This is our JSON file. Um, now I'm going to rename this to um, 
WSL box. And I'm going to change down here to WSL box and here to WSL box. Make sure all of those are the same. Um, that's just the name of the container, basically. Um, our user is going to be called VS. You could change this if you want. I just like it being short. Um, and uh, Docker file. So that's referring to the Docker file we just created. Uh, that's actually going to load in like the Linux environment that we're going to be using. Um, down here, extensions. This is actually for Visual Studio extensions themselves. So like if you want like some kind of code syntax highlighting or other things, uh, that's useful for that. Container env, this sets our environment environment variables. So these two are pretty important if you actually want to use GUI, particularly if you're using Windows 10. I'm not exactly sure how this applies to Windows 11 because Windows 11 has a new thing called WSLG, which actually allows you to run Linux applications natively. WSL 10, I mean, Windows 10 doesn't have that, so you definitely need to have this for Windows 10. Um, but essentially, this is just contains configuration um, information for both Visual Studio Code and Docker, like the actual Docker command that's being run. These are the arguments that you would use if you were actually using Docker from the command line. Now, onto our Docker file. So, the Docker file basically pulls in a existing Docker image, which is kind of like a, a flash frozen version of a Linux distribution in a sense with a, a bunch of programs preloaded. Um, also, it's lighter weight. It's not like a full Linux distribution. I'm just trying to keep things fairly simple. Uh, the username here uh, is going to match the one in the dev container.json. Um, this is you can pretty much ignore this. You're going to need it, but um, it's it's just to make permissions and things make more sense and uh, overhead stuff. And then here, the run command basically just runs command line commands just like you would in the terminal. So here I'm just setting up our bash RC like you would see in the uh, ROS tutorials. It would probably mention uh, putting the source uh, setup.bash into your bash RC. Now, if you don't know what bash RC is, it's just kind of like a configuration file for your Linux user. Um, now, next thing you're going to want to do is um, go to the command pilot, so control shift P, uh, rebuild and reopen container. And it's going to take a second. It's probably going to take a long time if you've never done this before because it's going to have to download and build your entire container. But yes, you're going to want to trust folder and continue. And you can actually click on this starting dev container to actually kind of see what's going on here. And you can see it's just kind of it's running a bunch of commands that Actually, this has a lot more log information than you would probably see if you were just running this from the command line. Um, it does a lot of extra stuff for you that would be a real pain to do um, manually. But it looks like I think it's built. Yes, it's built. So now we can actually start doing things like um, in here in this folder, you would probably want to create your Catkin workspace and then start following the ROS tutorials if you're new to ROS or um, start putting in your packages, uh, create a source folder here. Um, anyways, uh, so I've dragged my ter terminal into the left pane uh, just because I like it there, but um, regardless of how you, you've configured your VS code, I just uh, you can create a new terminal by just going to terminal and then new terminal and it should open one up and you can see this is our user and we are on the machine like machine it's a virtual machine in a sense uh, called wsl box and we're going to have access to all of the things that are included with ross foxy uh, desktop so for example rviz2 um, actually this is the point where i show you what you need to do to make your uh, GUI work, particularly if you're on Windows 10. So you're going to want to go and open your X server. In this case, it's going to be called X launch. 
I'm using VCX SRV. And um, just going to click next, start no client. Um, click next. This really shouldn't matter as long as you've exported the right um, libgl configuration. Th this kind of can trip things up. libgl always indirect, but so long as you set that correctly in your dev container.json, it should be fine. Then you can just do finish and that'll, that'll start running the X server for you. And this is where you can start using your GUI applications like uh, rviz2. And voila, rviz2 is now on Windows. Of course, you can see that this is very slow. You'll probably have better luck on your computer. My computer is a dual core uh i7 from about 2017 so it's uh really uh struggling on there that should basically do it you should basically have all of your ros commands available um yeah that's it um and at this point you're you can you're all set to do ros stuff and you can do this with pretty much any version of ROS too. You can even use ROS Noetic, ROS Melodic, uh, ROS Foxy, and probably ones in the future too.